This video is going to make some of you furious. So sad. But I think it's going to help most of you. How many African cichlids can you stock in your tank? Let's talk about it. Here we go. So one of the first videos I ever made was actually on this topic. But I want to make a new video because, well, first of all, I want to make a better video. But secondly, I also want to include some information that I feel was missing from that first video. When I started getting into African cichlids, one of the first questions I had was, what size tank do I need for these guys? What you're looking at here is my 75 gallon aquarium, which was actually my first African cichlid tank. Right now it just has four VC10s that are growing out, a stray Mbuna that was sent to me in error, and a couple of other fish. My second question was, how many fish do I put in this thing? And if you look online, you're gonna find all kinds of different information. And I'm assuming that's why you were here, or you just wanna hear my answer and then bash me in the comments. Wait. Either way, I'm gonna share my experience with you and what works for me. But before we get started, if you're new to African cichlids, let's go over a few basics that'll help you decide how many of these fish you should be putting in your tank. These are my African cichlids. I love them because of their personalities and this outrageous variety of color. Sometimes they're more like dogs than fish. Well, really dumb dogs, like not like a wiener dog or anything like that. Do your fish do this when you go to feed them? I love these guys. Well, if this is your first time seeing African cichlids, you're probably blown away by all this color in the freshwater fish. This video is directed to those of you who are just starting ACs, but also those of you who have been doing this a while will get some good info too. I think there will be a certain backlash for this video, mainly because I'm not gonna to succumb to the popular vote on this subject, and I feel very strongly about what I'm going to say, and I'm not gonna cower in the face of adversity. I've been a fish keeper off and on since I was a little kid, an African cichlid keeper for the past two and a half years. For the purposes of this video, I'll only be talking about peacocks and haps, not Mbuna or Tanganyikans. So what's the difference between a peacock and a hap? Well, they're both from Lake Malawi in Africa, although I have some that are also from Lake Victoria. Well, I mean, they're actually from Idaho and Florida, Go but the species down. is endemic to those lakes in Africa. They're so colorful that they're often confused with saltwater fish. Oh, but don't you be confused about hitting that like and subscribe button if you made it this far in the video. It's a good thing, trust me. Peacocks almost all share the same body shape and are usually on the smaller side, around five to six inches. They're usually the more colorful of the two with an endless variety of colors and patterns. Haps can also be smaller like peacocks, but they also have many species that get really big, up to and sometimes larger than 12 inches. They have a myriad of different shapes. Some are colorful like the peacocks, but I find a lot more blues with the haps and a less variety of colors overall. These here are my Victorians which are typically small and have a unique body shape. You can usually tell a Victorian just by the body fin and shapes alone. This here is Zeke, my zebra oblique adense, and also the best fish that ever lived. You can see a full video on every African cichlid I currently have if you click on the link in the upper right corner. By the way, do you have a favorite fish? Maybe even better than Zeke? Well, let me know in the comments. In my experience, I found that peacocks overall are much more likely to get overly aggressive than haps. But this doesn't mean that haps don't get aggressive. Some of them can become extremely aggressive. Coming to kill ya! Just look at Gary here, my Venustus. He's pretty chill at about seven to eight inches, but when these guys get a little more dominant, let's just say Gary might not be nearly as chill. And check out his beefy, tough guy face. I just love him. Because of their aggressiveness, people have devised methods to curb African cichlid aggression. One of them is overstocking, but we'll get to that later. Before you can figure out how many fish you can put in your tank, what size tank do you need for African cichlids? If you look around, you'll find that the majority of people are saying that a 55 gallon is the bare minimum for an African cichlid tank. No way, dude! Now maybe for Mbuna, but for peacocks and haps, I disagree. It doesn't give them very much turnaround space, it's a smaller tank, I think a 75 gallon is the absolute bare minimum that you can go with. And I would even go so far as to say that's only for a grow out tank or maybe for peacocks and haps that are gonna be at the five inch range. So mostly just peacocks actually. So if I'm being honest, I think that 125 gallon is actually the best choice for you if you're starting out with African cichlids. That's gonna give them six feet of continuous swimming room, which they love. They love open swimming room. And it'll give them room to explore. But I think that even if you have 125 gallon and you have a fish like a Venustus that gets over 12 inches long, even 125 is gonna start to feel cramped after a while. Okay, so how do you decide how many African cichlids you can stock in your tank? You'll find the popular opinion is to overstock your tank. Well, what they really mean is to highly stock your tank. If you overstock it, that'd mean that you have stocked too many fish for your filtration and tank capacity. People highly stock their African cichlid tanks to curb aggression. 
These fish get really vicious, so the idea is to put a ton of them in the tank so that no one fish gets singled out and harassed to death. Oh, thank God. And this has its pros and cons. One of the positives of highly stocking your African cichlid tank is you'll very rarely get a single fish that has been marked for death. You know, like a, a fish just has to have this fish dead before the day is through. Dead meat. And another thing is with all these fish swimming like side to side, all the way across the tank, top to bottom, you're just gonna have a sheer wall of color in your tank. There are some negatives to highly stocking your African cichlid tank. You're still gonna have some aggression. I mean, you're, you're never not gonna have aggression in an African cichlid tank. But you won't have the marked for death scenario usually. You can still have some skirmishes that are shorter lasting, some little chases here and there. And you can also still come home and find like that one fish on one side of the tank and then everybody else crammed over on the other side of the tank and they won't even step over here because of this bully. Those usually don't last as long, but you can still get those. And you might be surprised to know that I actually don't know what fish are thinking, but nope. it seems like if a fish can't swim without bumping into another fish, then there's so many in there that maybe it's hard to relax a little bit in the tank. And then also you're gonna have to have more filtration because of all these fish and filters are expensive and then you have to maintain the filters. That takes a lot of time. You also have to spend a lot of time doing the water changes and don't be late on those, especially if you have a ton of African cichlids in your tank. Amen. Those of you that have watched my channel probably already know where I stand on heavily stocking your African cichlid tanks. For those of you that are new here, let's just say it isn't my favorite way to deal with the aggression issue. There are actually plenty of other methods of curbing that aggression that you can try, and I've made two full videos covering several of those methods. You can see those in the upper right corner. I'm not crazy about the idea of dealing with psycho fish by cramming as many of them as possible together in a small glass box. I think it takes away from that open swimming space and I don't think it provides the greatest quality of life. I mean, if you went to work in a small office with 10 psychopaths and then you told your boss, hey, you know, I think I'm a little uncomfortable with this. How would you feel if you came to work the next day and there were now 30 psychopaths you had to deal with? And he was like, but uh, I'm glad I could help. Do you think that's off base? Let me know at home what you guys think about highly stocked African cichlid tanks. Keep in mind you don't want to keep your stocking level too low or it will be difficult to curb that aggression. It's kind of a fine line. You want to have enough fish to create a distraction, but in my opinion, not so many that the tank is overcrowded. So here's how I would stock an African cichlid tank. If I were going to start a 75 gallon aquarium now, I would start with five smaller African cichlids, wait a couple weeks and then add about five more. And that would be it. I wouldn't add more than 10 African cichlids to a 75 gallon aquarium. If you add more than that, or you add larger African cichlids, you are gonna start to notice that aquarium looking smaller and smaller as they get bigger. As I said, I had a 75 gallon aquarium with my first African cichlid setup, and I wouldn't do it again after seeing how small that tank was starting to look when those fish started to get bigger. If I were gonna go with a 125 gallon aquarium, I would stay away from any fish that are larger than about eight to 10 inches, and I would put about 25 fish in there, and that'd be about it. That'd give them plenty of room to swim around and get away from each other if necessary. When I'm out of here. Right now I have, in my 240 gallon aquarium, I have 35 African cichlids, and some of them are about the 12 inch mark. And I think it's wonderful. Although I still get people that are complaining that it's either overstocked or understocked. You just can't please everybody. The most important thing is to just be an active fish keeper. Keep watching your fish. If a problem arises, be ready to react right away. And have a quarantine tank set up at all times, just in case you need it in a hurry, because you probably will. When you're ordering your fish, do your research. Find out which ones are more likely to have that ultra aggressive disposition. You'll always have the wild card factor, so you don't know for sure what you're gonna get until they've matured and either the, the switch flips in their brain and they go completely psychopathic or it doesn't ever switch and they just remain the same fish they've always been. But at least it'll give you some kind of idea about what kind of fish you're gonna get. You have to watch a lot to make sure that these fish are going to get along. If it looks like one of them's getting beat up too badly or another one's being super aggressive, don't be afraid to rehome. I mean, you can try some tricks that I mentioned in my aggression videos, but if it doesn't work out, Maybe just give them a new home. Sometimes that's all it takes. And if they're in a new environment, sometimes they lose that aggressive behavior anyway. Then once you have the stocking level that you're satisfied with, be very reluctant to add more fish to that mix. Once you do, there's a hierarchy in that tank and it could disrupt everyone and the inmates could all go to civil war. There you have it. My two cents on how many African cichlids you can stock in whatever size tank you have. You can take my advice, toss it, forget about it, whatever you wanna do. 
Just make sure that your fish are happy with whatever you've decided. Let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful, what size tank you have, and how did you decide how many African cichlids you were gonna stock in your tank? As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.